Unity Virtual Production Episode 3, Controlling the Lens in the Real and Virtual World. Now, this is my favorite stuff here. I love talking about the lens and how everything works on the camera. This is gonna get tricky. There's, this is the most complicated part of virtual production. So in this video, we're just gonna talk about how this is actually gonna happen, the execution of controlling the lens for virtual production. Let's break it down. We have the lens, which captures light and evenly distributes this light over a sensor plane. Your average zoom lens has three abilities, focus, iris, and zoom. Focus adjusts where the focus plane should be away from the lens. The iris controls the amount of light allowed into the lens, and the zoom controls the focal length, wide, medium, and telephoto. On a prime lens, you have one focal length and you have no zoom function. So apart from the iris, the focus is constantly changing, right? The person can be constantly moving back and forth. Um, when you tilt in, the focus is needs to be compensated. So if I turn on autofocus on my camera here, I should be now in focus, right? And now if I move backwards, I'm still in focus because the camera racked focus backwards to this focus plane. So what I'm gonna need to do is change my focus during the shot. When the focus is bad, it can completely take you out of the cinematic experience. When done right, the audience will not even notice. And the focus can be an artistic decision made by the AC, the DP, and the director. I have devised four ways, four main ways that we get data from the camera into Unity for real-time virtual production. We have a Fizz controller, which stands for Focus, Iris, and Zoom, and it's going to control the camera, and then the camera's going to send data into the computer. This is the basic, how it is right now. The way to do it is usually extremely high-end with airy cameras. They have this capability. Now, the next way of controlling data is to use a data box. A data box is a third party that's going to be in between the focus, iris, and zoom controller, the hand unit, and Unity. So it's, and it's also between your camera and the focus system so that you don't need to replace your hand unit that you already have in order to control the camera and have all the data go to Unity. The data box will interrupt that, send the data all the way to the camera, and at the same time, send the data into the computer so your $30,000 Preston hand unit still works perfectly fine and nothing about that workflow will change other than adding a third-party data box. This type of setup I think is gonna be extremely popular in the future. So the third way that we control the camera is with Unity, where the focus unit is interfaced with Unity on the computer directly, and then Unity controls the camera. So we can do this today with an Arduino unit. So we're gonna build an Arduino unit and have a focus knob and an iris knob if we can, and that's going to control through Unity the physical camera. Now, the fourth way to control a camera, also the most unpredictable, and I completely think that this is going to take over the entire ecosystem, is we're gonna completely cut out the idea of having a focus polar and Unity AI will control the camera. Yes, I have worked on set as an assistant camera, as a focus polar, and I completely see the entire job as a focus polar disappearing because of technology. What this is, is basically telling the computer all these intrinsic rules on how the shot should be played out, okay? Like, with the focus, we know that we wanna keep the focus on the subject, 
so we can do some type of focus tracking. And then also with the focus, we know that we don't want the focus to be over 50 feet and we wanna make sure that the focus is more than 25 feet. So these parameters given to the computer, they can figure out the rest. It's just like GTA where when GTA, you your camera's right here and you're following the actor and let's say you turn, the camera turns. How does it do that? There are rules set in the camera on how it behaves and all of this is coming to movies very soon. Because you're programming the camera and all the movement and all of these things that on set you would decide on set because it's so detailed and data-driven virtual production, you will be able to download this style from your favorite director. Let's say you want a Hitchcock scene, uh, a push-pull from Vertigo. You will be able to download exactly that shot and then you can make it your own from there or you can keep it as is. Let's go a step further and just talk about, let's say you have a whole show that's a sitcom. You don't even need a camera crew to be there anymore. What, you, what I think will happen specifically is that machine learning, uh, AI will watch 40, 50 years of three camera sitcoms and they can find out what camera to use when, when to cut, what camera angles to use for drama or comedy scene. On set, you would actually have to coordinate with your actors and put marks down and the focus puller would have to set like when to do when with the marks. All of this time spent on set figuring all this out is completely going to dissolve away and it will all focus on the actor doing their thing. Now we've talked a lot about the future. Let's talk about today, how lenses are manipulated and used today, okay? We have a lot of controllers that are being created right now to control a camera and lens. So today we have the Nucleus M Follow Focus, which is very popular with indie filmmaking and low budget productions because of its low cost and pretty good value. And this controller, they're working on the technology so that you use the same exact controller, but it interfaces through USB with the computer. The second thing is we have Vanishing Point, which is creating a lens reader that reads the data of the lens and sends it into the virtual world. On top of that, we also have Glassmark by LoLED Virtual. Glassmark is making something that's under $500 that encodes the lens data. Now on the high-end side, there's DCS that integrates with the Preston Fizz system. This is the data box that I was talking about from the different types of bringing the data into virtual reality. So in this series, I hope to tackle all these different types of the way lenses can be used. And the thing is that the list of problems that can go wrong is mounting up even before we get started. You could have transmission errors, you could lose transmission, you could have lag, you could have disconnections. What if something's off by just a minute amount and it throws everything else off in the project? There's a, so many things that can go wrong and that only in the future after trial and error will we know what's the best way to do things. Thanks for sticking around and learning about how the virtual and real lenses will work in virtual production. And we're gonna try all this out in the future and I hope to see you there.